Hi, I'm the insect inspector. All over the world, flying insects are in decline. So what's happening to them? Reliable research carried out over three decades in Europe show insects have dropped by 75%. The survey carried out in nature reserves in Krefeld, Germany, concludes that neither land use nor climate change are the causes of decline. The report suggests an unknown but significant factor to be responsible. With evidence from around the world of the windscreen phenomenon, or why cars are not bug splattered anymore, the unknown factor alluded to must be global, man-made and interfering with their natural habitat the air. There is a candidate, a universally propagated anomaly that grows in scope and intensity year on year. With over six billion smartphones and a whole internet of things, wireless connected devices now outnumber people on the planet. The air is packed with electromagnetic radiation needed to enable our connected world. Does it interfere with theirs? Mobile communications are pivotal in society. The electromagnetic radiation, EMR, needed to support them is generated by a global network of over 30 million wireless base stations worldwide. Their masts produce high frequency signals from each of the many antennae on them and generate a fluctuating energy field 24-7. The base stations, spaced between half and 35 kilometres apart, form a honeycomb of cells that handle over 30 billion calls a day, as well as transferring astonishing amounts of data. The system uses up about 1% of global energy. We are now in the fourth generation of wireless computing. 1G started in the 1980s when phone signals were patchy. 4G is now almost a universal service. That's a lot of EMR radiating around the planet, focused precisely in the low-lying airspace that insects inhabit. It is certain flying insects have declined at the same time that wireless technology has grown. But does that mean there is a relationship between the two? If you plot insect decline data from the scientific survey mentioned earlier, you see a steady rate of decline over 30 years. If you then plot the data from the growth of cellular network infrastructure in the same area over the same time period, you get a correlation between the two. Now we have a relationship, but is there a link? All living things are exposed to weak electric and magnetic fields. Both fields induce voltages in the body. Tiny electrical currents exist in insects due to chemical reactions that are part of bodily functions. Peer-reviewed research proves exposure to EMR, however weak, excites these parts and causes heating at a cellular level. EMR also impacts insects in areas like navigation and perception. After all, part of an insect's view of the world is through its antennae. Flying insects are known to be sensitive to EMR and affects the one most important to us, the wild pollinators. We know for sure that bees are in peril. Whatever else is causing their decline, EMR makes them aggressive, lose orientation and causes unexpected swarming. In short, even ignoring other compelling evidence, there is a relationship and a causal link between insect decline and increasing electromagnetic radiation. This is not a tirade against the mobile communication industry, but in building a worldwide wireless web, we started the largest environmental experiment ever undertaken without knowing the risks. While not conclusive proof that flying insect decline is in line with the wireless web's growth, what is certain is that continuous radiation from wireless base stations affect their ability to navigate, feed and breed. With the race on for the next generation of wireless technology, it may be too late to stop a wide-scale extinction of most pollinating insects. 
While the loss of pollinators would be disastrous, it might not be catastrophic. Most of the staple crops that provide the majority of the world's food energy are wind pollinated. For crops like fruit that need pollinating insects, they could be pollinated by hand, as some are in the Far East already. Nonetheless, if we want them to survive for the biodiversity they help create, a no man's band could be allocated in the frequency spectrum in which they may thrive. However, with cyberspace a geopolitical battlefield, flying insects look set to be the first casualties. But let's end on an optimistic note. The one flying insect that doesn't seem to be affected by man-made EMR is everyone's favourite, the butterfly.